So here's a great question that came in. The question is, how to assist students who come to yoga with reverse breathing? So reverse breathing is not actually a phrase that I ever use, and I'll explain why in a minute. But, but first of all, uh, let's just assume for the sake of this answer that what that means is that you ask a student to take a, a deep breath, and when they inhale, you observe that their abdomen is moving inward. And then when they exhale, it's moving outward. So first and foremost, what I need to do is to help the student notice what I've just noticed, that they have a particular pattern of breathing and this pattern may be a habit for them. This is really essential as a first step because they can't hope to make any meaningful change in a pattern that they're not capable of noticing in the first place. Now, the important thing while this is happening is that I don't wanna suggest that they're breathing wrong or in any way breathing incorrectly. I wanna emphasize this, it's, that it's really important that I don't frame the conversation as, you've been breathing wrong, so now I'm gonna teach you to breathe properly or yogically or diaphragmatically. And that's why I never call that pattern reverse breathing because calling it that implies it's the opposite of something that's, that's more correct. The actual issue here isn't correct or incorrect or, or right or wrong. The, the real issue is whether a person's body and breath are resilient and fluid and adaptable, or if they're stuck in habit patterns that are inappropriate or inefficient or insufficient in a given situation. The concept of correct or incorrect breathing really only pertains to techniques, and techniques are only really useful in the context of training the breath, whether it's training for a yoga student or an opera singer or an athlete or using the breath for therapeutic purposes, what all these have in common is a need to identify and release habitual patterns. In other words, the best way to unlearn an old way of breathing is to learn a new way of breathing, which is just a different way of saying it's a technique. So all that having been said, and assuming I've gotten the student to notice that they have this habit, I'd simply ask them to see if they can figure out how to do the opposite pattern. You know, see if it's possible if when you inhale to make your belly move forward and when you exhale to make it move back. And I'd have them try this in a variety of positions and in movements, you know, whether they're uh, supine or prone or standing or sitting or maybe even a supported inversion. In all these positions, I'd have them do simple flexion and extension movements while they're trying this breathing pattern to see if they can notice the relationship between their breath and their movement and their breath and their position. Now, while all this is happening, I'm asking them to notice if any of these positions or movements make it easier or harder for them to notice and or change these patterns. You know, in other words, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking this observation that I made and asking them to engage in a process of self-inquiry and self-exploration. Now, incidentally, it's just as common for me to find people that are stuck in a belly breathing pattern as it is in a, this so-called reverse breathing pattern. Just because you've paid a, a yoga teacher or a voice teacher to train you to belly breathe doesn't mean that that's a better place to be stuck. The fact that you're stuck is the problem, not the pattern you're stuck in. So, thanks for the question. Hope it's helpful, and um, thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.